want to welcome to the second evening of the Kennedy Forum for Commissioner for District 3. Uh, I am Ron Richmond and I represent the Chamber of Commerce. And Bruce Jones over here, our moderator, is representing the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we want to welcome you all. Uh, the format we're going to use tonight is going to be uh, the, the questions and answers will come through the moderator. So if you've got one, we've got pieces of paper out here. Uh, let your question down and get it to Bruce and he'll make sure you ask him, okay? Uh, before we get it started, how about if we pay attention to the flag to the right? Lord God, you shower us with blessings every day, and we are so thankful for all those blessings. And Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the hospitality of the briefcase, a very comfortable place to hold this for. We thank you for the candidates who are willing to give up their time and knowledge for the betterment of District 3 in Oklahoma County. Dear Lord, guide us, be with us through this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. During the during 1975, 
I was in the military on the USS Midway, and I am a Vietnam veteran. Uh, after the military, uh, I went back to college. I used the GI Bill, and with in combination with roughnecking on drilling rigs, could have made it through college in three years. I hung around one more semester just to get some more accounting uh, classes and aviation classes. My first job after college was a patrolling landman, and ultimately I became manager of a small drilling company, which again the family owned. And during the oil and gas crash of the 1980s, I moved on to the mining uh, portion of the family business and became president of the mining company in 1985. The original mine that my father opened was Pauline number one. My mother's name was Anna Pauline. Uh, he did not get the, uh, the words backwards because a Pollyanna is associated with mining for gold and riches as opposed to the name of the person. Under my reign as in the mining business, uh, I was in charge of opening and operating Pollyanna number two through Pollyanna number nine. And uh, we had we had ran out of reserves here in Altamonte County, so the bulk of the other mining uh, mines were in southeast Oklahoma, with Pollyanna number eight being the most successful underground mine, uh, basically in the state of Oklahoma. The reason we were able to survive during the mining years because I successfully negotiated long-term contracts, one of which was with a power plant in southeast Oklahoma. So all of the products that we produced either went to produce uh, limestone, cement, or electricity. So I have physically been in every lime production plant, uh, cement plant, and power plant in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, I know that subject like the back of my hand. One of the, uh, during the original contract with the power plant, it was a three course uh, contract. Well, I had three different products I had to deal with. We supplied half the fuel to the power plant down in Poto, Oklahoma. We removed the fly ash, which is basically a, a, a mild cement product, and we supplied limestone. So, because of my limestone background, I understand, and my highway heavy construction background, I understand the specs associated with gravel uh, that's, that is necessary on, on the roads. Mm. Lost my train of thought here. <laughs> Give me a minute. During the years of, of my mining background, uh, when I was president of the company, we, we were at a low of 15 direct employees and a high of 110 direct employees, which ultimately made a significant impact uh, in not only Henrietta, but Southeast Oklahoma. At that same point in time, I was also founding member of a home health care agency here in Henrietta. In 1997, my father uh, passed away and, and the family decision was made for me to begin the exiting process of the mining uh, business. Uh, at that point in time, uh, there was a telecommunication boom going on and I was lucky enough and persistent enough to uh, obtain the contracts and ultimately build a small series of telecommunication towers here in Southeast Oklahoma. I sold those telecommunication towers and, and I guess in 2005, I began my, if you're from Henrietta, you're gonna end up in the pipeline business, typically one way or another. So on, I did the pipeline thing on and off for 15 years. Started as a pipeline inspector, 
uh, worked my way up through the right, right of way end up of it and ultimately became project manager. So all of those subjects are associated with right of way, right of way maintenance, heavy machinery and heavy machinery maintenance. We're going to go to the moderated section now where y'all are going to have some questions and you get to go first. Y'all just get to share that. Okay, first question.
Some of them don't like them, and some of them are, are totally against them and don't like them next to them. And I, I really feel like this is going to be an issue that the county commissioners are going to have to deal with. And to me, the sooner it's addressed and figure out exactly through a coalition of the right people, uh, come up with a solution on county zoning. <laughs> County zoning is clearly a hot, hot topic, depending on who you talk to, uh, because I travel the highways as much as I do, or probably more than I do the county roads. Uh, we all know, we all live here, and it's clear that, that District 1 and District 2 are expanding faster than District 3. So if there's a zoning issue associated with the build-out down Highway 75, that should be addressed. But on the other hand, uh, because of the geological structures and the terrain between here and Milwaukee on Highway 75, I don't see a lot of industry moving down Highway 75 in anywhere near the future. Kind of part and parcel with that uh, is a uh, question on county building permits. We have buildings going up throughout the county. Uh, some of them have got, you know, built well, some of them, we don't know. Well, I believe that you're supposed to get a permit when you build in the county. Uh, there's a lot of people that think that, well, you don't have to have one, but you're supposed to get one. And, um, you know, who, uh, who, whoever is in charge of enforcing it, I, I've never known it to be enforced. But you build something, you go to the county assessor and you let them know you built it. But uh, there's some things that require a permit and some things that don't. And I believe that you've got to do your research when you go to bail and know what your responsibilities and duties are. I'd like to dive more direct and uh, go back to the last question, if you don't mind. Uh, the subject of trash and trash dumps was brought up. Uh, it was allowable, and I'd like to make a comment about that. Uh, this is just me, and certainly I'm not pointing a finger at anybody, but it was just a few weeks ago, I had an old couch that I had literally for 40 years, and I went to the, to the, to the terminal to get rid of it, and it was closed, and I made appropriate phone calls, and I was told it was down for maintenance, and well, one's going to be fixed, and the answer I got was nobody knows. So there are only two places to dispose of large trash items, and it's either in Oak Mulgee or on the way to Morris, or it's in McAllister. And if you know your background about, about those county dumps, both of those are what are called orphan mine lands. They were old coal mines, uh, old coal pits, uh, that were not reclaimed uh, prior to the regulatory days of, of reclaiming. I have two questions that are basically the uh, same. Both of them deal with uh, county government. And one is what element of the county government is most effective and why? And then how do you propose to make county government more efficient? I think the, to make it more efficient, as for me, I would want to do an assessment. You know, if I'm elected, I, I will want to do an assessment. And it's the county commissioner's responsibility, all three of them together, uh, to administer the county government. Um, one of their duties you know, is to audit the other county officers that receive money annually. To my knowledge, I don't think that's ever been done, and had that been done, maybe there wouldn't have been that, 
you know, where they was overpaying themselves. Uh, I would like to have a look at that 0.5 CSS tax that's been in effect for 11 years and there's never been no accountability whatsoever on that. Nobody's, there's never been a, you know, a breakdown that made available to the public or through social media about how, how much did District 3 get about? Two and one. Or what was it spent on? Um, what was the second part of the question? Well, how would you make the uh, county more efficient? I think you would have to have an, an assessment. Uh, and it would probably take a good, like, three to six months to do that. Um, but I think anything other than that, I think that you would be kind of like putting the cart before the horse. So, uh, on the efficiency of it, um, you know, maybe one people can do the work instead of two, maybe we need three instead of one. Uh, you would really need to assess each, you know, each branch, each office, each, the, the county commissioner's administrative duties are so broad and they're so massive. And they're like listening to the Democratic candidates the other night, you know, and you'll see them out there working and they can operate this, they can use this machine, that machine. What they're going to find, and Mr. Walker can attest to this, most of your time is spent on administrative duties. And uh, like, if I'm elected, you won't see me out on the road. You're going to see me doing my administrative duties. I am going to bring the funding so that these guys that are out there on these road crews, they have the money to do what needs to be done. And uh, so as far as your question and answer to the assessment, I think I'd be speaking out of school and putting the cart before the horse is to say how we go about doing it, because you don't know what you're going to find or face until you're there and you do the assessment. So, and then I'll be glad to tell you this is what I'm, you know, the direction I'm headed in. You know, assessments are kind of like a study. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I don't think I need to study a whole lot. Uh, at, or District 3. I'm not putting, I don't mean to say anything about your answer, but I know heavy machinery, I know labor forces, I know who's actually putting in the hours and who's not putting in the hours uh, without going to the county barn and looking at the machines myself, I have a suspicion, and this has not been verified, I have a suspicion that some of the machinery is, is not properly being maintained, which yields to a, a lower production ratio, and those machines are, are qualified to perform. So, to me, Machinery and time maintenance are the key to it. And how would you make the uh, county government more efficient then? I become more efficient by utilizing the machines in the manner in which they were designed to be used. Uh, you know, example, uh, a caterpillar can, Model X can move X number of cubic yards per month if it's properly maintained. Now, what, what gets in the way of that particular machine doing that are the people behind it, so whether it's being maintained and, of course, the transportation time to get it from point A to point B. Do you plan to coordinate uh, with the Creek Nation on a lot of the roads and projects throughout the District 3? God bless Creek Nation. Without them since 2006, you know, we would be worse off than we are now. And I don't know if anybody's seen Channel 2 News the other night. This is coming out of District 1, the Twin Hills Road. And the county commissioner just shoved it off on the Creek Nation. And that was so unfair because the Creek Nation has assumed the burden. I mean, they, they get everything thrown at them on the roads. They go out and they build a really good stretch of road according to ODOT and USDOT standards. And then 
the county does not maintain it. Uh, it it's, I, yes, I will have a great relationship, and I'm a member of the Cherokee Nation. I will have a great relationship with the Creek Nation because without them, uh, I don't know what the citizens, not just in District 3, but 1 and 2 would do. They are a blessing to us. And that's how I recognize them as a blessing. Well, my answer is very simple. The nations have more money than the county's ever going to have, so we have to learn to be friends and we have to uh, be as actually involved with, with, with their end of their build out uh, as much as maybe even more than the state because they're more local than the state is. So absolutely. And this one is kind of open. Why do you want to run? I'm glad you asked me that because I'm 65 years old and I'd spent 25 years in politics and I was happy with my life out there on my land, you know, taking care of it. But it was the roads. We don't have road beaches. The road is the beach. We have Johnson grass everywhere. You, can't, you almost get hit every time you leave the stop sign because of the Johnson grass. And our roads just continue to deteriorate. And I want to tell you why. Well, you know, I was talking about assessments a little while ago. And that's one of my things is assessments, you know, and research. And I could not understand where did the money go. And it goes back to the 2006 bill that the legislature passed. Now keep in mind, this is something to consider. All of our state officials, like senator representatives, they were not in office in 2006. So this has nothing to do with them. And term limits got all the ones that was there when this bill was passed. And I would recommend that everybody in here get this bill and that they read it. It was codified into law in 2006. It's House Bill 1176 from 2006. You've got to read it. it took, you know, as a conservative, I believe in local control. The more local, usually we're better off. But what this bill did was it took the motor vehicle excise tax, which was the county's major amount of funding for their roads and, and, and maintaining them, and they gave it to ODOT. And they split us up into uh, county engineering districts. And we are in with uh, Wagner, Muskogee, Sequoia, Adair, McIntosh, and Haskell. Now what's killing us is in this bill they use the language that you can only access this money back from ODOT uh, in a manner that benefits the most people. When they passed this bill, they gave the implementation to ODOT. And so ODOT followed what the legislature asked them to do to a T, including getting the funds out to the counties. And when they use the language, you can only get the money if it, where it benefits the most people. We cannot compete. We are a low populated county. We, are, we have low traffic counts. I have a map here, an ODOT map that shows traffic counts. If you don't have enough cars driving across Main Street in Henrietta, you're not gonna get no help. If you don't have a certain number of cars driving across this road, you're not gonna get no help. If you cannot compete with what's going on in Northern Wagner County, Muskogee, or Adair County, so we can't compete because we are not the most people. This is what's motivated me to run. When I started trying to find out, okay, what, where is the money? Nobody is this incompetent. Why can't we fix these roads? And this is what I've discovered. And they named it, this is going to crack you up, the County Roads and the Bridge Improvement Act. They took our county commissioners 
uh, authority away to, to a, a great deal. Uh, when you read the bill, you read what was created, and you read what they're asking these counties to do, and the County Commissioners Association needs to be in an outright fight over this. It's your rural county commissioners versus your metropolitan. Your counties with a lot of people, they love this law. Your rural county commissioners, they hate it, they're fighting. Uh, Logan County, which joins Oklahoma County, they couldn't pull out of this. This is mandated, but they did pull out of the county engineering district. And you have to submit your work projects to these county engineering districts, and if you've got the most people, you're going to get the money. If anybody, if you, you can Google this, and you can read it, this here is the five-year program from 2021 through 2025. There's one project listed in here for District 3. One. So, and it doesn't come up to like 2023. So I would encourage you, if you're really concerned about the future of Henrietta, uh, the, the, uh, like building a, uh, uh, you know, bringing growth in, to our county, to District 3, you need to start really thinking about um, research. Because when you get to research it, you're going to be amazed at what you find. And they have us at a disadvantage. They've got us at a disadvantage because of this bill. I have talked to our state representatives and I've talked to our state senator. Uh, you know, they weren't in office, they wasn't aware of what's going on. Our state senator has had his staff pull this bill. He's, he's, he's studying it, he's studying where this has left counties like us that don't have the most people. And with any luck at all, uh, the coalition, build a coalition of the right people, and the Clock's ticking to 2022 is coming up. They'll back, be back in session. And this is going to have to be amended by the legislature. The rural county commissioners took it to court, the state court. The okay, yeah, I oh, okay. I could go on about this for hours, so. Right. Okay. Let's give uh, your opponent there a chance now. Okay. The question right. was, why do you want to run? Yeah, I got the question. <laughs> fact is, I live in, in Oklahoma County. Uh, this is my home. I have the skill set and I have the ability to make a difference for District 3 Oklahoma County. And that's the, that's the general nature of it. To address a few items uh, that she brought up, uh, I have been in the highway heavy construction business all my life. There is always legislation at the state capital and the federal capital that affects the distribution of funds. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's, it's a nature of the beast. So every year, literally since 1985, I have gone to the state capital advocating for legislation associated with the industries that I was in. And at that point in time, the was colored. So, when we passed legislation, just because I was good enough at that particular part of it to know who to go to and, and get the language passed. A perfect example of what, what I was able to accomplish, and I can't say I did it by myself, because I had help, but we passed the, at one point in time, none of the power plants burned Oklahoma coal. So we passed the Oklahoma mandatory burn law. And at, for a period of five years, every power plant in the state of Oklahoma had to burn an absolute minimum 10% Oklahoma coal. So I understand the advocate and the uh, political process behind most of this stuff. Well, let's ask, the uh, final question I have is, what is going to be your very first priority what are you going to do the minute after you say it, I do, when you're sworn in? I know the answer, but go ahead. <laughs> Fun. The very first thing I want to do is get this.
has changed. Help Mr. Walker out here. Uh, we need that money returned to Wonka County. It is what we need in our districts. And let us uh, compete. Uh, Henrietta has such potential. We can go west, we can go south, we, we can go east. Uh, we've got the, you know, the highway structure for it. We've got a great future, but we need people to step forward. Uh, good people, you know, throughout the community. We need to keep our politics clean. Uh, encourage good people to run for office that have visions for where they want our district or communities to go. And go for it. Get involved. Go for it. And I would immediately, just because of my background, the first thing I would do is, 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 is look at the budget, find out you know, how much money District 3 actually has the day I take office, and you know what the budget is 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 allotted to. Take inventory of the machines and the manpower that I have. That's day one. Day two, start making application for the grants, which will not increase our tax dollars here for District Three. The grants necessary for the broadband build out. Once I do that, the next step is looking for grants specifically targeted for. District 3, not District 2, not District 1, but for District 3, for improvement of roads, uh, the trash system, the ambulance system, and any other grant that I'm honestly fine. And basically that brings us to a conclusion this evening. I do want to point out that there was to be a third candidate here, David Berry, and he has since announced that he is withdrawing from the race his name will be appearing on the ballot, but he's not going to be a candidate. Of course, that's why instead of three, we got two. And we appreciate both of you for showing up, appreciate the time. Thank you to everyone who turned out. Uh, I hope we answered some questions for you. Maybe we uh, raised some more. The candidates will be here for a few minutes after this is over. So you can visit with them and bend their ears. Thank you all very much. Do we get our closing statements like the Democrats got? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we don't want to get too far ahead of us, do we? Here, Matt, you can go first. <laughs> well, I'll make it short. You uh, pretty much answered all the, uh, all the uh, questions. Uh, that are leading to my closing statements. I think I have the, the historical ability and skill set to bring Old Mulgee County District 3 forward uh, through the grant process, the political process, the management of funds process, and it's not my money, it's your money. Uh, so you have to be extremely careful doing that. But I know these grants are available. And uh, I've already started trekking down uh, the path to obtain those. Okay, if we can get to the Oklahoma legislature in 2022 to address this and amend it and get our motor vehicle excise tax return directly back to our counties in our banks. Not, they invest our money over there and keep the interest. So the next thing is we, we need to go to our federal, you know, our U.S. senators, our uh, U.S. representatives. This has been so catastrophic. We've had 14 years. The bill was passed 2006, went into effect in 2008, and it is so catastrophic and widespread in these uh, low-populated, low-traffic rural counties. It's going to take a lot of money, and a grant's not going to do it. It's going to take a lot of money just to get it back to where it was and to make the improvements that we need. So what we needed, if we needed a Rural Road Improvement Act at the federal level, if the state cannot get its hands on, that they, it goes specifically to the counties and the, the small towns, cities, the communities in these rural areas They've been hurt by this too. It's affected them too. So 
We get the federal money to get everything back in shape. We get our money back where we can keep it, and we where we can keep making progress and maintaining. So I thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming out. This has been a very good forum, it's been a very good evening, and it took a lot of participation, you all did very well. We are very happy that you came tonight, and we're going to walk away being a little more knowledgeable voter. Thank you very much.